In this video, we're taking a look at how we can control the graphics on our kiosk. So to start out with, we'll do a quick demonstration of the kiosk and the various screens that can appear. So normally by default, your kiosk will come with the header and footer banners. We can see they're both in wood grain. However, these can be changed and updated depending on your branding standards. The logo at the top, as well as the background image and the burger image are also changeable. So please do refer to the kiosk user guide for more information on the graphic pieces and formats that can be provided to our team to help update your kiosk. My kiosk is currently in dual language. So again, this is a setting that can be enabled or disabled depending on your specific installation needs. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the screen to begin. And as we can see, mine is localized to both English and French, but this prompt can be turned on or off depending on your setup. And a number of the prompts we're looking at through this quick view are prompts that can be either enabled or disabled depending on your needs. So I'll choose English. I can scan in a customer card if I am using customer database for any sort of on account or um, declining, inclining charges and such. I'll go ahead and put a customer in just for now. I also have a prompt whether or not I'd like to dine in or take out on this particular meal. This will change the printouts that come out of the kitchen printer for preparation. So if you're not using this, again, a prompt that can be enabled or disabled. When we start talking about graphics and views, there's a number of places that we can change in the setup. The colors we see for the home screen, the user screen, the barcode in image at the top of our list here, and the buttons along the bottom are all controllable colors that can be changed to meet brand standards. Again, discuss this with your project management team and they can help out. So the first screen we come to is our categories screen, and these are going to be paired up with our quick menu. So the different tabs we have in quick menu match up to these different sections on our screen. Usually we suggest up to eight. However, you can fill it up all the way to 14 if you wish. As we can see, mine is set currently to seven. Graphics can be used on these pieces in order to help with your upsell, to help give your end user customers a visual indication of the kind of items that are being sold or within that particular category. I'll go ahead and click on starters just to begin. And as we can see, we have a number of different food items appearing in here. All items that we put onto kiosk can have an image assigned to them. Again, helps with your graphical elements, helps to upsell. And this is the piece we're gonna talk about today more in depth, is how we add the images to our items and how we add images to these main category sections. So any items we have that do not have a graphic assigned to them, will come up with a gray background like we're seeing on these components here that again, don't have an assigned graphic. Another piece we're gonna explore as part of our item setup today is on our items, how we can assign a calorie count. As we can see, these items have calories listed in the bottom left-hand corner of their display, as well as how we can add additional information text to our items when we do the setup for them. So again, we can see if I click on the info button on any of these items, they do come up with additional detail about the product. And this helps us to flag out ingredients, potential allergens, or any other details we'd like to add in about our items. To complete a transaction, I'm simply gonna choose an item. I can have a combo upsell prompt turned on. We'll explore this in a future video. In this case, I'm just going to say no. And my item has been added to my order. I'm going to check out. A number of pieces on the checkout screen that can be configured. We can allow the use of discounts and coupon codes as scannable barcodes. But in this case, I'm going to continue to payment. The charity screen prompt is another screen that can be enabled or disabled as part of settings. I'll go ahead and skip over this. And I can also enable or disable the choice to either pay at counter or pay here. So when I do a pay at counter, it's going to suspend the transaction and a cashier would need to resume it on a standard POS terminal. In this case, I'll choose to pay here. And again, this is a, a prompt screen that can be enabled or disabled because if you're not going to be using pay at counter, we can bypass this and go straight to only allowing pay at kiosk. I'll choose to pay here. Any payment methods that are allowed are also enabled or disabled as part of settings. So if you're not taking gift cards or you're not taking vouchers, for example, 
these are pieces that can be um, disabled from the kiosk to only allow the kind of payment methods you're accepting. So for example, credit and maybe on account. I'll complete my transaction to on account as I do have a person in my setup right now. We can confirm by clicking on the head at the top that I did put somebody in, as well as seeing any kind of balances they might have available to them through the customer database. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose to on account pay this out. My transaction is complete. I also have a prompt to turn on at the moment. This is available in versions 1770 and higher to email a receipt as well if I would rather instead of printing it. In this case, I'm just going to choose no receipt and continue on. So we're going to hop into the back office now to take a look at how we set up some of the imagery that goes along with our kiosk here, the components that go along with the items and with our categories. But first, I do want to review a little bit about the image standards and best practices before we do that. So reviewing a little bit here about the theme and graphic opportunities we have at the kiosk. We can see that as discussed earlier, the header logo, the footer, the banners that we see at the top and bottom, the background and the burger image are all pieces that can be changed out for images that you provide to our teams in order to update to your brand standards. As we can see, there are different size requirements. We do suggest that these particular images would come to us in PNG format as they're a higher resolutions type. Moving forward, any other graphics used on the kiosk, we do suggest coming in as JPEG or as a GIF or GIF, depending on which way you uh, fall on that discussion. Um, but again, we want to have a more condensed image format for additional imagery. So when we're creating out our image, we want to think about what images we're going to use. We want to think about what sort of a layout we're going to have. We want to think about what main categories we may want to present to our end user customer and what kind of pieces we want to put into that. So taking a look at our categories, we do suggest up to eight. However, you could go up to the full 14 if you like, but again, it just condenses them smaller and smaller um, on the screen at that point. So we're going to name the menu, that little category we're talking about. We're going to put in a category image. And those images really should be 550 by 550 pixels. Generally, something in a JPEG or GIF style format is great. So once we start putting our images in, we can see to the right, this is what we're going to see graphically. And when we start talking about the items, the items generally should be 450 pixels by 550 pixels. So 450 wide by 550 tall, JPEG, GIF, great. Um, I suggest that you would make your graphics a little bit top heavy on your design because as we can see to the right, the price and the description that do appear on every item do cover over a portion of the bottom. So about a, a fifth of the image is covered by detail. So again, making your images a little bit higher up on a white background. Again, please don't use transparency, but do them on a white background so that our images can come in uh, fairly clearly here. As well, options can be added on. So for example, you buy a coffee and is, is it going to ask you for cream, milk and sugar or you're buying a hamburger? Will it ask you for ketchup, mustard, relish and so on? We can put those options assigned to an item. The images are still the same, 450 by 550, and generally up to nine on a screen is a good selection. However, we can go much more than that. The kiosk will provide scrolling options at that point. So let's move on into the back office and how we get some of the graphics for our items and categories onto our kiosk menu. Let's now take a look at how we can add some of those graphics in for our items and for our category images. I'm going to go to our menu setup section here today, and we're going to be focusing mainly on our item creation and our quick menu layouts. So let's work in the kiosk menu here today. I do have a number of different categories available within my kiosk division. I am gonna add a new one here today. So let's right click, we're gonna add a new group and we're gonna call it snacks. And within my snacks, I'm going to add a couple of categories. I'll add one for chips. I'm gonna add a category for chocolate and I'm gonna add a category for candy. And again, in each of these, I can add my own individual items and set them up accordingly. So right click, add menu item, 
and I'm going to create a new item in here. Before I can add my graphics, I do need to have my items created first. Um, they need to be written to the database before they can accept a uh, graphic change to them. So I'm going to put in some chips here. We'll do. I'll do some Lay's all dressed chips, and I don't need to fill out any additional information. Now, because my kiosk was in dual language, I have um, both English and French. I may want to put an alternate language in here for French so that it does show up when the alternate language is in use. But for now, I'll leave it blank. I'm going to set a price for my chips. We'll say $1.99. I can assign any printers it may need to go to for preparation. Um, in this case, chances are this may be an item somebody has in hand, so I don't need to send it necessarily to a kitchen printer. I do not need to tag a printer for it to print out on the customer receipt. Every item will do that regardless of setup. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to say that I'm going to put some taxes on this item. I could apply it to discounts if I like. And I'm not going to be doing any other setup at the moment. And as we can see, I can't add pictures yet. I do need to create all of my items first. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly create a number of items to go along with our new kiosk layout. And we'll come back to it once I've finished completing all of my items. So another piece we can add into some of our items at this point, depending on if the item will be scannable by barcode or not at the kiosk, we can also go down to our miscellaneous tab and enter in a barcode for this item. So I'll right click and choose to add a scan code and double click to edit. So I'm going to be using the full barcode on the product. So that will be the 10 digits that appear underneath the lines, as well as the far left leading number and the far right trailing number. This will give us a 12 digit barcode. I could scan this in at this point if I have the item in hand and a barcode scanner on my computer. Otherwise, I'm just going to type it in manually. So I've entered my whole number and I'll hit enter. As we can see, I do have a number of items listed in here now. So anything new we add into our system will come in as green and I'm going to choose to save all at this point. So once the items have been saved and written to the system, we can see they've changed into dark, a darker text here. And now I can go back to the advanced tab for each of my items and start adding in graphics. I'm not gonna be adding in POS menu screen graphics. These would change the buttons as the cashier sees them. So instead of having text and a color, would instead have a picture. So again, that's entirely up to your design elements if you wish to do this. Generally, we recommend just changing graphics on kiosk. So I'm gonna change the kiosk ordering screen graphic. I'm gonna select this field and I'll right click and choose to change the picture. I have my system image setup window has appeared now and I can put graphics into either system, coupons or menu items. Generally, it's best to keep your category images under the system section here or uh, putting your menu items under your menu item section. I do have a number of items already loaded into my demo environment, but we're going to be adding some new graphics in here today. I'm going to select on menu item and right click and choose to add the item. My next step will be to choose to load an image. So I'll be uploading an image from my computer into the cloud, into our back office environment. So I'm going to choose to load the image and I do get my load image format up here. I'm going to upload from my little control panel here. I'll choose upload, which will access my system directly. By default, it's set to view custom files, but I do want to view all files to see my graphics that I had preset on my system. So I'll go ahead and choose my Lay's All Dressed Chip graphic and say OK. And we see now it has been put up into the cloud and I'll choose to open it. The graphic has appeared. I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to say Chips and I'll call it Lay's. And it does help to give them a bit of a description as you're creating your image. They are searchable. So the more detail you can add in is more helpful down the road. So I'll say save to this image that I've added in and I'm going to select it for this item. So now this particular item has a graphic assigned to it and I can continue through and do the same thing, adding in all of the new pictures I'm creating here today. So again, add the item, load the image, upload the image, change my custom files to all files, pick the graphic and say open. It's already been selected for me. We'll say open again and I'll give it a name. OK, 
Okay, save it, select it to go along with my item, and we continue on this way. So I'm going to continue adding all the graphics for my different items, and then we're going to come back and discuss the calorie count as well as adding descriptions in for our items as well. I've gone through and I've updated all of the graphics on my newly created items. As we can see, the graphic does change depending on the item I select. We can change the graphic if one has been put in by error. We can simply select on the piece, right click and change the picture. And we can pick a new picture from any of the graphics we may already have in our compiled graphics. By giving our graphics good naming, we can also easily search. So if I start typing in chocolate, I can see all of the chocolate bars that I had put in previously and choose a new graphic at this point if I'd like. Simply pick the new graphic, choose select and exit, and this will save the graphic to that particular item. I'm not going to make any changes. I do like the graphics I have in place, but we are going to talk a little bit about adding a calorie count as well as an alternate description. So if I'd like to add a calorie count, I simply change the number under the calorie field. Anything in here with a minus one is indicating that it's sort of a non-used value. You may see this throughout other sections in the Volante system as well, but by having minus one, it means do not use. So if I start adding in a new update in here, for example, if I put in a calorie count of 850, this will now reflect 850 calories on that item when it goes into the kiosk. I can also add descriptions for the item for a additional information field as well as an alternate description. So I'll go ahead and add those in now as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a description here for this item. Again, something I've brought in from the corporate website of that product. But again, this can be anything to do with uh, ingredients, with allergens, any other information you'd like to flag about this item. And I'm going to put in the alternate language as well. I'm not going to complete any of the other fields on any of the other items for today, but we get the general idea of how this information will appear once we get to our quick menu setup. I'll choose to save all because again, anything in purple is indicating a change has been made and I do need to save that. So now let's move on to our quick menu and we're going to take a look at how we can alter our existing kiosk menu to add another category. So right now we do see the categories up here again with the names as well as information about the items that have been put into them. If I'd like to add a new category, I simply grab one of my empty tabs. I am going to set my rows and columns to three by three for this example. Your columns on a kiosk layout should always be three columns and you should always fill up all spaces. If you don't fill up all the spaces and you leave a blank on a POS screen, that's fine. The buttons will hold where they are, but on kiosk, it will take any items and move them up into the empty space. So for example, if I'd left a space here where the key lime pie is, and for example, this isn't here, what would happen is then the kiosk would take lemon pie, move it up into that spot, move everything over and keep moving things up and over until all spaces are filled. So regardless of the layout you do, it will fill in the spaces with product. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a name now and we'll say this is our snacks. And I could put an alternate language in, which I will do as well. And now we're going to start dragging in our items the same way we would be creating our layout for any of our POS terminals. So I'm going to take my chips, put them into place. I'm going to take my chocolate, put those items into place as well. Now, again, we can see I do have an error on a price here that we can correct after. And I'm going to put in all of my items and again, additional corrections need to take place. I can't correct my prices from this screen. However, I can go back to my menu item screen. I do like to use the quick views to do some quick changes. So if I go right back to the grouping called snacks, I can see all of the prices on my items. I'm going to go ahead and double click in here and change this one to 99 cents Hit enter and the same with the one below it. Yes, I've corrected all my prices. The changed items show up in purple. I am going to make a save to that change. We'll come back to our quick menu. And I do want to put in French and I do want to go through how we can add a graphic to our new snacks category that we just created. We'll put in our French name. And now if I'd like to add in a graphic for snacks, we can do so. Same general principle as adding the items with their imagery under the item section, 
we're going to right click on the actual tab in this case. So, so again, any tab we can right click on, but we're going to put a graphic on snacks. So right click, change the image. And now again, I can see all the images I have in system and in menu. And I am going to add something under system this time. Right click, add the item, and the same type of method happens here. I'm going to load my image. I'm going to choose to upload. And I'm going to change my graphic to all files. Now, as we can see, the graphic I plan to use here is very wide. So what will happen is the kiosk will crop this to fit in the available space, regardless of the actual size of this image. So I'm going to select it and choose open. It's selected here. And I'll choose open again. And I do have my graphic. I'll give it a name. We'll call it cat for category, category snacks. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to select it. And now this is the graphic assigned into our snacks. The last step I'm going to do now is send a data sync down to my kiosk. And again, because I've uploaded a handful of images, my data sync may take a little bit longer than usual, but that is normal. So I'm going to exit from here. I'm going to choose to do my data sync. And I'm going to send my updates down to my terminals. I was only doing menu setup changes here today. So I'll simply select menu setup. And I'm going to say OK. And we'll see all of our terminals turning into our pending status. And as they complete their data sync, some will change into success once the new items have been sent down. The one we're waiting for today will be our um, ELO flip kiosk, which is what we're working with today. So now that our data sync has been successfully pushed down to our terminals, which we can see by the success messages, let's have a look and see how our changes have impacted the kiosk. So back on our kiosk, we'll go ahead and touch our screen to start out and we'll push through some of these prompts. So as we can see, our eight category has now appeared. We've got snacks as we added it to our quick menu screen. We can see that all of the sizes have reworked themselves into different alignments and different sizes. We can see that the image I used was cropped off to fit the space. So let's go into our snacks and see how this is working. So here we go. We have all of our items available to us. And we do see that only one of the items has a calorie count as we only updated the Lay's chips, the all dressed in this case, as well as only this item has an information panel. So when I click info, we have some information that does appear about the item. So as we can see too, the more information we put into that field, the higher up the image gets covered up with the um, detail. However, clicking the information puts it back the way it was. I can now add this item into a transaction by touching on it. It says it's been added to my order. Because I'd also set up a barcode on this item, if someone has the item in hand, they can scan a barcode. I do not need to touch the barcode to have it happen. It just tells me scan your barcode items anytime. So now if I scan my item. We can see that the item has been added into our order. We can see the all dressed chips are now part of this. I can view my order details through the view order in the bottom middle of the bottom bar here. Again, viewing my order. And I can also go to my checkout and complete my transaction here. I'll go ahead and go to payment, bypass a couple of these extra screens I have enabled, pay here, and I'll just on account it out to complete our transaction. So thanks for watching the video on how we do our kiosk imagery. If you do have further questions about your new setup, please consult your project management team for further assistance.